My name is Rosa Vares Laimi, and I have a PhD in biomedical engineering. I finished my PhD 2023 in University of British Columbia. I work as a lecturer um, in University of British Columbia. My appointment is a joint appointment between uh, chemical and biological engineering as well as the School of Biomedical Engineering here at UBC. And I basically teach everything that everyone else doesn't want to teach. For example, I teach a second year thermodynamics for biomedical engineering students, uh, which is historically a dry and abstract course. And um, because it's hard for the students and um, it's hard to get students connect with the concepts, uh, it's usually also not very popular with um, other faculty members as well. I also teach another course uh, that is the impact of technology on the society, where we are having a diverse population of engineering students across all the programs in UBC, and we're discussing um, the impact of um, what we design as engineers on our day-to-day -day life, not just the technical aspect. So there is uh, unlike any other engineering course, there is no equation in that course, but um, we basically talk about how does it impact the society, how do people perceive it, or how do people start using that design or that technology, uh, and how does that intended use differ from what people actually do, how does it get integrated with um, people's life, and it, it impacts all the other things like cultural aspects, uh, economical aspects, uh, environmental aspects. So we kind of like uh, try to look at our technologies from a different lens, from the different perspectives. I, I do also teach at the pre-university program where uh, high school students are kind of like getting introduced to what it is like to have a university level course and trying to get to introduce them to what biomedical engineering is, for example. And in that course, I have a really diverse uh, population of students. I have people who know nothing about biology, all the way to people who have done genetic engineering labs and they kind of like know their way around um, uh, biology. And so, um, one of the biggest challenges for me in that course has been how do I tailor my content so that everyone is engaged and everyone is learning something uh, throughout the course. And so my strategy for that uh, was basically after like surveying the class and kind of getting to know who is at what level, um, I basically um, group them in a way that um, like more uh, people who know more about the concept are in the team with the people who don't. And uh, some of the activities, one of the most common activities that we do in the class is um, I, ha I have uh, the, the ones who know more, uh, the more um, like the more uh, knowledgeable students to explain it to those who don't know and so that way they are also kind of engaged in trying to make it understandable for their peers and then for their peers it's coming from a peer and so it kind of like makes it uh, more accessible in a way and then after after that I bring the whole class together and then asking those who were learning in those smaller groups that now can you explain for the class that what is it and then I'll complete my slide deck or like my teaching material for their studies as we go. So that kind of basically um, gives both groups something to work with and something to challenge themselves with. And that has worked really well uh, at those lower levels. <laughs> So in terms of connecting with students, um, that's a really good question. And I think um, I try to kind of make myself available as much as possible, like anyone else in the community would do. Uh, uh, one of the other things that I noticed it, it works well for the students is um, in thermal course, thermal historically having a reputation of a hard and dry and abstract course. 
I make myself vulnerable and I tell them that I was in your shoes 10 years ago, not too long ago, uh, and I struggled with thermal. In fact, I almost failed my own thermal course. And so if I'm here right now teaching it, it, you can't be worse than me basically and so by kind of like um telling my personal story the uh, all the mistakes that i made during my undergraduate studies in that same course and like the, acknowledging what i struggled with and how i overcame uh, um all those problems uh i think i make a good connection and make students feel safe that if you're not understanding a concept right in the first place the first time you're seeing it it's fine it's totally normal for a course like thermodynamics um you all you just need to be persistent and patient with yourself and try to kind of uh, learn from your mistakes. And that's why I kind of designed those self-grading exercises as well that, yes, we'll look at the assessment as a way of assessing your knowledge, but it also is a very good tool for you to uh, assess your learning and learn from your mistakes. And so uh, that's uh, one way that I'm connecting. And in fact, uh, those students, in, despite Thermo having a reputation of a bad course or a hard course, um, and despite the, them taking a really hard revenge on me on the teaching evaluations because Thermo is not a favorite course, uh, they still remain connected with me two years after the course um, is over. They come back to me for any other um course that they are struggling if they have a, qu a question or like for a uh, career and uh, like other academic uh, advice and so that basically tells me that I mission accomplished basically I was able to kind of connect with them at the personal level I was able to be approachable enough that they feel safe to come back to me and uh, discuss their other um, important um uh, questions or concerns as well. So for my scholarly activity as a lecturer, I actually uh, don't really uh, have an obligation to do uh, engineering education research uh, because I, my appointment is 90% teaching and 10% uh, service. Uh, so there's basically very little time for me to kind of get involved with research. However, I've been really kind of interested in uh, the type of research that uh, we do in engineering education. So I'll try to kind of keep up with um, the research as well on the side. And so uh, I've been working on a variety of different um, concepts within engineering education. For example, um, during my PhD, I looked at um, problem-based learning and how we can implement uh, PBL approaches into a lab course. Um, and so um, how do we give students autonomy and um, power to decide what they want to do to apply their knowledge, what they've learned in theory and in their other lab courses uh, and apply it into a real world problem. It's an open-ended problem that doesn't necessarily have a solution. Um, and in there, uh, what uh, we were more interested in trying to um, investigate was uh, the process that students take as opposed to the results. So if they can't actually solve the problem it's not and don't get a good result, it's not a big deal. It's more uh, important on how you're getting there and if you're able to kind of troubleshoot the process. So that was um, one of the ideas which we kind of like focused on for a couple of years. And then COVID hits, we kind of like switched this whole format to an online format of how do I now give that same level of autonomy and power to the students while they're not actually in the lab. And then once I finished my uh, PhD, I did a one-year postdoc at Michigan State University with Dr. Michelle Green, where um, we worked on a gamified project to increase student engagement with a biomechanic concept. And so in there, uh, with this uh, with the fictional storyline where uh, students can kind of like imagine themselves as the detective of the co uh, the case uh, they were able to kind of like investigate 
not just the technical aspect of uh, falling down and breaking a bone, uh, which is the main focus in the biomechanics course, but also the other aspects of how, how much students are invested in trying to kind of um, solve this because now it feels like it's your own case and you really kind of are invested in it. And so we kind of ended up publishing um, a few papers uh, on both PBL as well as gamification. And so currently um, in my role as a lecturer, one of the other uh, areas that I kind of focused on is um, student metacognition and trying to separate uh, the grades basically from uh, students learning and, and feedback. And so one of the things that I kind of focused on is getting students involved in the grading process uh, and getting them recognize um, the mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And so in, in that sense, uh, although it might seem that it's a lazy effort from uh, my side and our teaching team to not grade student work, um, it's actually not, we actually grade the student work, but we, actually, we also give them a version of their midterm uh, so they can self-grade their exam uh, and uh, judge where they made a mistake, how severe that mistake is. And so uh, over the past two years that I've implemented this uh, self-grading strategy, I started looking into if that actually helps uh, student understanding of the thermodynamic concepts and if I give them a similar problem or um, a, another problem on that same topic, do they do better uh, in their exams, in the proceedings exam? And so do they remember what needs to happen kind of thing? Uh, I did also focusing on how do we integrate uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, concepts into our uh, core technical courses. Being a woman in engineering hasn't been easy. Also coming from a country that doesn't really um, value EDI per se, uh, hasn't been a really easy journey. I remember uh, I wanted to become a chemical engineer uh, when I started college or started university. But I was told that you are a woman and so you have no place in chemical engineering because chemical engineering in my own country is basically associated with uh, oil and gas and petroleum engineering. And so uh, you definitely don't have a space uh, as a woman there. That was the perception back then. Even my parents were uh, kind of like um, advocating against becoming a chemical engineer. But having experienced that, having told, being told that um, this is not a girl major or you're not really kind of belong here, uh, I really want to kind of like work on ways where we can kind of change this paradigm and it is already changing, but I want to kind of make sure that um, other female uh, students are not experiencing and that's definitely a lot better in North America and in developed countries, but some looking back at my home country it's still a big barrier for a lot of women to become uh, accomplished. And so I'm kind of um, looking into ways to uh, integrate some of these um, EDI concepts, both in our courses, as well as uh, if I can kind of like have them transferred into uh, undergraduate programs back in Iran. Well, I'm actively looking for positions to um, get into a position where the research and engineering education is a little more valued and I do have the space and the resources to continue working on engineering education because it sounds like there's a lot that can be done but being a lecturer and being overloaded with courses to teach um, in here in our department. There is essentially uh, not a lot of time that I can devote to uh, to the research. Um, I still continue doing the research, but it's at the cost of my own personal life. And so I'm actively looking for uh, positions, uh, teaching-based positions where, or a professor of practice, where you do get part of your appointment uh, as a research um, aspect. Um, and so in that sense, um, 
I'm still kind of like uh, really eager to continue any of those lines of research in terms of PBL, gamification, designing escape rooms uh, for a lab or for my thermodynamics course.